Hi there. I think we're online now. Thanks so much for joining us. My name's Leanne Allen. I'm from Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. And I'm Sarah Blank. I'm with University College Dublin in Dublin, Ireland. Um, we just thought it would be a good idea to give this webinar to you guys so you can better understand um, the Australian university system and the Irish system as well. So we've hopefully met you over the last couple of months um, talking about at college fairs and different things. So um, hopefully this is just a bit of background for you um, and a good idea to refresh on how the systems work in both those countries so you can make a more informed decision um, about studying in Australia or Ireland. We're also both based in the United States. Um, I'm based in Los Angeles, California. I cover the entire West Coast. Um, so I work with students who are applying to UCD. I review the applications, but I'm also just a point of uh, reference and a source, uh, a resource for students who are looking to find more information on UCD. Um, and I've been out here uh, for about three years. I actually live in Los Angeles as well. Um, and I was previously based on campus. So I'm very familiar with um, Macquarie and the Sydney education system, or the Australian education system. As you can probably tell, I am an Australian. Um, and I've actually studied in five countries. So a huge advocate for study abroad and um, just try and encourage all students to do it in whatever capacity possible. So what we have set up is a presentation that goes over just the basics, um, a little bit of a, uh, International Admissions 101, um, and then we'll go through um, some of the benefits, the application process, and some general information on our countries, and then we'll provide some detailed information on both of our universities, um, and then answer any questions at the end. Um, so we'll jump in and get started. Um, this is normally what students look like when, or families and parents, when they uh, are checking out international education. Is this a real thing? What do I do? Where do I go? Um, it usually turns into how fast can I find information? Um, and typically that's our hope is that by the end of this, you'll be dancing out of here um, with more information on where to go, what to start, uh, how to start this process, and where to find the resources that you might be looking for. So there is obviously innumerable amount of benefits of studying overseas. Um, I think one of the most important ones to think about is the long-term benefits of it. So studying um, in a different country is obviously um, you gain soft skills that you wouldn't get to the same extent as just going to a university in the same state as you or maybe even to a um, close by city or state. Um, we had an alumni who graduated from a Bachelor of Arts um, and he interviewed with Moody Analytics in New York and he said he had to go through five stages of interviews to get the job and at least 30 to 40 percent of every stage of that was just about his experience in Australia and to be able to reflect so confidently on that um, was something that was really powerful to his employers and the fact that he could talk so um, and was so excited about the prospect um, and he was much more mature than his peers because he had undergone such an extremely exciting um, school experience as well. One of the things that we're going to talk about um, in the next couple slides are long-term focus, so um, how our uh, educational structures really promote individualized experiences, but also more focused experiences um, while in the classroom and outside the classroom. We'll talk about our graduation um, completion and the time frame that students are actually in school, both three and four year program models. Um, but one of the other benefits of studying overseas um, from our perspective is the cultural competency, cultural fluency, adaptability, however you want to describe it. Majority of our students who are going abroad already have an idea of the world around them. They're interested in exploring something new. They're interested in taking a new opportunity and meeting people from all different walks of life. And so with our two institutions, with a good, um, a significant portion of our students being from international um, other countries outside of Australia and Ireland, it's very normal that when you're sitting in class, you're sitting next to somebody who's not necessarily Australian or Irish. They might be from all over the world. Um, and the idea is that you get to know students with different backgrounds in conversation, in group projects, when you're um, even just outside the classroom, getting to know people and working with them and understanding the different ways and viewpoints that these students bring with them um, is a really unique part of the process of going to a school with international students. Um, it makes you, again, a little bit more marketable in the sense from an employment standpoint because you already know how to work with people from other from other backgrounds so we see that a lot of our students not only want this in their education um, experience but that they also get it once they're actually at our universities 
So we thought this was just interesting to show you. So you can see that by the 2020s, it's expected that over 7 million students are going to be leaving their home country to study overseas. And we put this in here really just to emphasize um, the competition that it's not just going to university that's going to help you get the job. You really need to set yourself apart. And as more and more students study overseas, um, it's obviously becoming more and more competitive. Um, also, there was, it's an interesting survey. It's a QS Global Employer Survey that was conducted in 2014. And um, of the 10,000 companies that were contacted, over 80% said that they actively sought out graduates who had studied abroad. So we're just going to go into a bit of country specific information here. So for Australia, um, you may or might know, may not know that we actually have three year bachelor degrees. So we don't do general education in Australia. Um, it essentially just means you don't do it. So you, you don't miss out on it or you miss out on it essentially, but we, it is deemed equivalent to a four year degree. So for students who really know what they want to study, it's a great option. If you are thinking about doing um, a Bachelor of Science and the thought of doing English and History again, um, doesn't make you too happy, this is probably going to be a really good option for you. Um, and because of that, it is direct entry into the university. So you apply to the program that you want to study. And therefore, the requirements for getting in are based on what you want to study. So studying something like law and psychology is more competitive than doing a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree. They are more focused in that respect. Um, you do have some electives, so you can certainly try and do different things. Um, if you're a science major, for example, and you want to pick up a language um, or you want to do some astronomy courses, that's totally fine as well. There is some flexibility in the programs where you can do that. Um, so you must declare your major in the beginning. Um, and the Australian system is a little more flexible than the UK system where it's pretty strict. You go in, you study that, and you come out three years later. In the Australian system after your first year, if you're like, this really isn't for me, there is room to move around. So definitely keep that in mind when you're thinking about the different countries. Um, in terms of um, applying to Australian universities, we look at your SAT or ACT scores. So we want to see your transcript to make sure you've done well, but we don't publish a minimum requirement for that program. Um, with that, we don't require essays or recommendation letters either. So it is very much a merit-based process. We go by the theory that if you want an education and you think this is the right one for you, that's great. We let you make that decision. So it's just a little different mentality to the US system. Um, also, it's quite interesting, if you are thinking about doing professional programs like medicine, um, veterinarian study, law or dentistry, it can be a really great option to look outside the United States. So medicine, for example, is six years in Australia, the UK and Ireland out of high school, whereas it's probably going to take you eight to ten years to do it here in the United States. Veterinarian science is about five years outside of the US, it's eight years here. Um, and you can actually do law straight from high school as well. So you do a four year law degree, you come back, if you're practicing in California, for example, you need to do an LLM, which is a one year master program. You then sit the bar exam and you're a lawyer, probably the youngest lawyer in the country, but that's still a lawyer. Um, and the it's different jurisdictions depending on the state you're in. So it is a little easier. I think in New York, you don't have to sit the LLM. You can just go straight into the bar exam, which is pretty good. And of course, you can't talk about Australia without a koala. Um, so Ireland is very similar um, to Australia. It's modeled very much after the Commonwealth countries. Ireland is technically in the EU, in the European Union. Northern Ireland is actually in the UK. So those universities may function just slightly different than, what, um, than the information I'm about to, um, to share with you. But we do have three and four year bachelor degree programs. Some of our programs are three years, some are four years. And similar to Australia, when we say that a program is three years, it's three years. When we say a program is four years, it will be four years. Our structured curriculum really doesn't allow for students to deviate off course. Um, you certainly, for example, at UCD, you get two electives every semester that you can take in other areas. Um, but for the most part, the coursework is very structured, um, which allows the student to make sure that they're staying on track for that three or four year program. Um, we do have the same direct entry model where if you know what you want to study, you apply directly to that program. We don't do general education requirements either. Um, and then there are some universities that have more flexible programs than others. 
For example, at UCD, we have a liberal arts and science pathway, which allows for students to spend one year kind of figuring out exactly which pathway they want to move into, and then they can apply to a specific college moving forward. Um, very similar to Australia again, um, our admissions review is very transparent. We want a 100% acceptance rate because we want students to apply to programs that we know they'll be admitted to. So it is important that students review the academic requirements prior to applying. They can, you can work with me, um, you can ask any questions, I can review your transcripts ahead of time. So we really want to make sure that students are aware of the requirements but also applying to the right programs that suit where they are academically. Um, in Ireland, if you complete a a degree, um, an undergraduate degree, you're allowed to stay back in country for one year um, and two years for postgraduate um, for master's degree. So it's a great option for students who maybe want to stay back in Ireland, um, explore an internship, travel, um, explore work opportunities, anything along those lines can be a great use of that. Um, depending on the type of university that you're looking for, you'll certainly find more universities that have larger international student bodies, um, and that goes along with the different types of resources that are available to international students. Um, you'll also find that there's a difference between rural and city life in Ireland. So if something's not city, then it's probably rural in Ireland. There's Ireland, there's not much in between. Um, so if you want a university that's in more of a college town setting, for example, or a much smaller, more country uh, type of setting, you'll certainly find that. If you want more city life, you'll find that as well. So again, it's mostly important for students when they're looking at universities to figure out exactly what type of university, um, not only academic programs, but also environment, because that will help you be most successful. And similar to Australia, again, we do have um, some of the fast track degrees, so that can be a really great option if you're academically um, eligible for those programs. For anything in medicine, in Ireland, if you're looking to explore a direct entry medicine, uh, medical degree, I recommend going to um, the AtlanticBridge.com. So just AtlanticBridge.com, that's where you'll find all of the necessary information for medical school programs in Ireland. And of course, we can't talk about Ireland without castles, right? So one of the biggest questions we get is, will my degree be recognized when I come back to the United States? And essentially the answer is yes, it will. Um, a lot of people are also concerned about the three year degree not being equivalent to the four years. So I always say to students, do you think that an Oxford or Cambridge University degree is equivalent to one in the United States? And if the answer is yes, then by all means, all the other institutions are as well, because they're all based on the three year degree and on the same model. Um, to find out, you probably have come across lots of different universities and want to know if it's legitimate or not. Um, so it's good to go to the world rankings. So QS rankings and the Times Higher Education rankings are great places to start. QS rankings particularly because they go into the subject-based rankings as well. So if you're thinking of doing something like linguistics or security studies, which um, is a little different, um, it's well worth checking out those rankings because you may be going to a university that you haven't really heard of before um, but excels in that area and does really amazing research. We don't recommend the uh, US World of News Report just because their um, ways of analyzing the um, rankings is a little um, questionable. Um, it's also worth pointing out the difference between an American university abroad and an international university. So you may be familiar with institutions like the American University of Paris and the American University of Rome, which are all great universities. Um, but they're essentially a US liberal arts campus that have been picked up, picked up and placed somewhere in the world. So they are predominantly 40 to 60% of American citizens in those classes. Um, and it is the four year liberal arts program. So that may be right for you, it may not be. So it's good to keep that in mind when you're looking at the international universities and the difference between them all as well. So because we work for public universities in Ireland and Australia, those institutions are accredited by those countries. Um, and so they're also deemed equivalent to the, um, public schools here in the United States. Um, if you're thinking about doing engineering, um, it's quite lucky. Um, there's this thing called the Washington Accord, which is an international engineering alliance. And so 50 uh, countries around the world have signed on to accept, um, essentially say that their engineering programs will be deemed equivalent um, to each of the other 50 countries, which is great. So you can go um, and learn in each of those countries and then you have the ability to work in those as well because it's recognised, which is very cool. 
And again, part of the degree recognition, um, and because of our structure and how um, our courses are laid out and how the direct entry model really allows for a more structured curriculum, it also allows for more independent study for students to spend more time within their field, whether it's um, during practicum hours, experiential learning, anything along those lines. So we find that a lot of our students are really coming out with their degree, not only with a degree that's equivalent to the American um, universities, but also a little bit ahead of the game in terms of research and, and study um, because of what our coursework allows for that sometimes you, uh, American universities don't quite allow for that same type of learning experience. One of the biggest questions that we always get is, is there campus life on campus? What's there to do? Um, and the best advice I give is Irish students, for example, are looking for the same type of environment that American students are looking for. They want to have fun. They want to be social. They want to meet new people. They want to have a great academic experience. But they want an environment that is well uh, rounding out their educational experience, where they can be involved and be engaged on campus. Um, Schools like ours that are much larger um, tend to have a uh, great sport, uh, sport and recreation facilities. Um, that is a picture of um, our indoor pool. Australia certainly has a beautiful outdoor pool. Um, <laughs> clearly weather differences there. Um, but we have clubs and societies as well. Our students are very active on campus in a lot of different ways. And because we have large international student bodies, it's normal for us to have um, specific um, organizations or clubs that are um, catered to different uh, backgrounds or different countries um, where students are coming from. So for example, we host like a big Thanksgiving dinner um, and a big Super Bowl watch party since many of our, our American students won't be home for those types of events. Um, so it's important to us to have that type of um, community for our students. Freshers Week is another um, term that you might hear throughout this process. Um, that's essentially a student orientation week. Um, not so much orientation in the traditional sense, but a, a student involvement fair week where students can walk around campus, check out different clubs and organizations, sit in on a presentation, um, and find ways that they can be active and get involved on campus. Um, residence life is also um, available on our campuses and many others, uh, other international schools. We have on-campus housing. Uh, many of our students are very pleased to see that it's not in the traditional sense like an American university, but most of our students will have their own room, oftentimes their own ensuite, um, and share more of an apartment style, more suite style living arrangement where there's a kitchenette, a sofa, a TV, more of a shared living space. Um, so for our students um, who want to live on campus, that's definitely an option for them. Um, and then of course there's off-campus housing um, in the neighboring area cities that students can explore as well. I think the biggest difference is that we don't have the NCAA outside of the United States. So although you can participate in sports, um, for example, you can participate for the university, the Australian University Games, um, there are some higher level competition as well, but just no NCAA equivalency. As well as Greek life. Um, so Greek life for most of our students is students who are actually Greek or have Greek heritage or maybe engaged in that type of um, club or society, um, but we do not have fraternities and sororities on campus that is an American um, experience. So the application process um, in a lot of ways mimics the American system. So for a lot of our students, it's not too far off what you're used to hearing about already in your high schools. Um, many international schools are now on the common application. So if you're using the common application to apply to many schools, you certainly can see if there are any international schools that you're interested in applying to. Um, UCD is on the common application, for example. Um, every school has their own direct application. So for example, if you're applying to Macquarie or to an Australian university, you're going to apply directly to that school. Um, the timeline follows um, the American system for most international schools where you'll still, you'll usually apply fall of senior year and then you'll have until May 1st, which is the National College Decision Day, to make that official commitment. Um, and I'll let it is a little different in the yeah. Southern Hemisphere. So um, being on the other side of the world, the seasons are the opposite way. And so we do rolling admission. So as soon as you're in your senior year um, and you've got your SAT or ACT scores, or if you're coming from um, a transfer, which you can do to Macquarie, not so much UCD, you can apply at any time when you're ready. Um, and generally speaking, you'll find out within two weeks that you've been accepted into the program. So you apply direct to the university as opposed to um, a consortium or um, center. 
Testing is a really big part of the international admissions process, primarily because we do, as mentioned before, we do mostly an academic review. We don't review applications through a holistic lens. We don't look at extracurriculars, essays, um, letters of recommendation. So we are really focusing on, uh, for the most part, GPA test scores, strength of coursework, grade trends, AP scores. Sometimes like Australia, where it's just SAT or ACT scores, and that's it. Um, so it is important that if you're looking at one of our institutions, that you do spend a little bit more time studying for the ACT or SAT. Um, it's where some of our scholarships also come from, which we'll talk about in a second, but it is an important part of the application process. If you have concerns on your testing or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to either one of us and we can always tell you for any of our programs exactly what you need. Um, our goal is to take the guessing game out of this and to make it very clear um, and a very streamlined process for our students. In terms of financing a degree abroad, we often get told or asked like how it must be so expensive considering how expensive it is for out-of-state students it must be crazy to be an international student um, well hopefully you're pleasantly surprised by this because it actually isn't as bad as studying often in the same state as where you're from and out of state as well one of the big things is that it's a three-year degree so you're already saving yourself a year of study and a year of paying tuition so um the um some of the elements of financing and education um there's two types of um, financial aid um, one is need-based aid and one is merit-based aid merit-based aid you as a student have complete control over this comes down to oftentimes just test scores depending on the school oftentimes gpa test scores ap scores things like that so it is more of a merit-based review um, but we do offer scholarships to students in varying amounts depending on where that student falls academically the need-based aid component comes through the free application for federal student aid. So we are two universities out of many that are part of um, the direct loan program. So what this means that is that if you uh, fill out the free application for federal student aid, FAFSA, and you are eligible for student loans through the federal government, you can use those student loans at either one of our institutions. So this is a really great option if it's something you're considering um, in terms of financing your education. Some things to keep in mind is that tuition is set. Um, it's one of the non-negotiable uh, elements of this. It is a direct cost, but there's other costs associated with your education, such as accommodations, so housing, books, supplies, travel, transportation, uh, meals, how much do you like to online shop, how much do you like coffee, all those types of things um, overall make up a student budget. So it's important to think about that when it's time to look at the overall cost of what you're going to be spending. Because while the big ticket item may be tuition and fees, that's not the only cost associated with it. So all of our universities provide a cost of attendance, an estimated cost of attendance, which you can go through and look to see what's your tuition fee, what scholarships and, and um, financial aid uh, maybe do you qualify for, but also what are some of the additional fees that I need to be aware of during this process. Um, by filing FAFSA, if you're eligible to use um, a GI Bill, that's something you can also use at an international school that um, is um, eligible to do so. Um, and then keep in mind city cost of living. So living in a larger city is going to be sometimes a little bit more expensive than living in more of a, um, a rural environment. So there are some differences with that. Just things to keep in mind um, as you're you're looking at financing it, um, your education. This grid or this um, comparison is mostly just to give you an idea that it actually isn't, like Leanne said, um, any more expensive to study in any of our countries versus if you were to look at the UC uh, Berkeley, for example, or Pomona College, which is a private school in California, um, uh, any of the private schools in the United States, it doesn't matter what your residency is. So in-state and out-of-state pay the same cost. There's obviously differences between in-state and out-of-state at any public state institutions. But as Leanne mentioned, some of our programs are three years. Um, all of um, Australia programs are three years. Um, in Ireland, some are three, some are four years. So that's something that is certainly to be considered because you may actually be saving money by going abroad. And we work with students every year who tell us, I'm actually saving money by going internationally versus had I stayed in my home state or gone to a neighboring state um, to go to school because of the process. And again, we guarantee that if our programs say three years, it's a three-year program. If it says four, it's a four-year program. Uh, many students will oftentimes take advantage of going on and doing a master's degree as well because most of our master's programs tend to be less than two years, a year, a year and a half, and are oftentimes much cheaper than doing a master's degree in the United States. 
So overall, um, while some of our programs may be more competitive for entry, that doesn't necessarily equate with cost, like what you'll find in the US. So something we're thinking about. There's lots of information available for you as well. So there's two particular ones, Education in Ireland and Study in Australia, that we recommend that students look at, as it's got a great breakdown of everything you need to know about studying in that country. So you could put in something like Marine Sciences and it'll tell you where you can study that in Australia. Um, it also has a breakdown and a really good idea of how costing works as well and just how the education system works. We're in Australia, obviously being in the Southern Hemisphere, it is a little bit different. So it really sets out very clearly um, how that all works. Um, we are both in country um, in the United States and we also work with a lot of other international universities as well. So if we don't think you're a good fit for our school, we're more than happy to be like, why don't you try this school which may suit you a little bit better. The Federal Aid International Schools website, if you go ahead and actually just Google that alone, um, it'll bring up a, um, a website through um, the U.S. Department of Education that will show you all of the schools that are eligible um, or part of the direct loan program. So if you're curious about which schools you can use your federal loans at, um, you can go ahead and check out that website. Um, one thing I didn't mention before is that grants, so any grants that come through the U.S. federal government can only be used in the United States. They actually can't go to any international school anywhere. And so the NACAP Guide to International University Admissions is also great, so well worth just putting that into Google and it'll come up as a PDF and essentially breaks down how the different um, country system works um, in comparison to the U.S. system, so that can be really helpful too. So what we figured we'd do is give you a little bit more um, specific information um, on our universities um, and we're happy to answer any questions um, that come through. Um, so UCD, as I mentioned before, University College Dublin, we're located about three miles from center city of Dublin. So for students who are looking for a very traditional style of campus, um, but also want close proximity to a major city, we're a really great option for that. Dublin's a great place. It's very fun, young, very vibrant. It's a huge hub for tech and finance. Um, all of the Silicon Valley, um, or many of the Silicon Valley companies, um, like Facebook, PayPal, Google, eBay, um, all have their European headquarters based in Dublin. So, um, and we're also a big hub for pharmaceutical and biotechnology. So for a lot of students, Dublin can be a great place, um, not just for the modern, um, or the history and music and, um, and art scene, but also from a new age tech and finance um, and biotechnology scene. Um, we are also an incredibly safe country. Um, the Global Peace Index um, ranked us 12th safest country in the world. Um, so in general, when students are asking about campus safety, it's not a big conversation that we have very often um, because our students generally feel very safe on campus. Um, uh, majority of the time. Um, this is just a little bit of a grid um, to give you a, a few snapshots of the university. As far as rankings go by Times Higher Education, one of the ranking uh, systems that we mentioned earlier, we are ranked in the top 1% worldwide. We have um, many uh, phenomenal US partners that we work with frequently. Um, if you go to any um, of the ECD, web, uh, the ECD website, you'll be able to see all of the US partners that we do work with. We are known as Ireland's global institution. For that reason, we have 8,000 international students. Of that are 2,000 American students. Um, we were founded in 1854, so we do have a significant history. Um, a, many, uh, a lot of the research funding, uh, funding that we get from the Irish government goes towards research on our campus in all different aspects, especially the STEM areas, but really across the board in all of our programs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of flexibility in our programs, um, depending what students are interested um, in studying and different options that way. Um, in terms of scholarships and everything, we already mentioned that we do offer scholarships that's based off of merit. Um, so where you fall academically will determine your overall scholarships that you might be eligible for. Um, these are some of the different colleges that we have on our campus. So any of the programs um, that you might be interested in studying, I do uh, recommend that you head to our website. You'll be able to see a little bit more. Um, we have the direct entry model. The liberal arts and science pathway gives the most flexibility to students in their first year. It's typically um, most of our American students are taking advantage of that program. 
Um, applying to UCD is really easy. We're on the common application. There's no visa required. Our priority deadline is December 15th. Um, by applying by that priority deadline, it will make you eligible to apply for our more competitive scholarships. So if you're considering applying to UCD, I certainly recommend that you apply by that deadline. Um, and if you have questions on what the requirements are for any of your programs, you can go to our website and click on undergraduate entry requirements or you can send me an email and let me know and I can always review your transcript um, ahead of time. Um, in terms of um, the admissions review process, again, it is mostly an academic review. Here's a little bit of information on where our students are coming from. Our average GPA is about a 3.6 unweighted um, at ACT 29, SAT 1300. That's a good ballpark range for entry for majority of our programs. Some of our programs do have specific AP requirements. If you're an IB student, we can always tell you what score you would need on the IB diploma instead of using GPA and test scores. Um, but it's important to review that process again um, initially so we can make sure that you're applying to great programs. And just a map of where our students are coming from in, in the United States. Um, you can see we are quite coastal um, of where we get our students from, but, um, but it changes every year in terms of where we get um, most of our American students from. And then in the middle, this is what our um, last year's income, incoming American class for full degrees, this is the percentage of what they were studying. So that does vary every year depending on our class. Student life, as we mentioned before, is huge on campus. We are well known for our community and our, um, and our campus life. That's, a, that's one of the reasons why many students choose UCD. Um, while we have close proximity to Dublin, we are also a very traditional college campus feel. So we have residence halls on campus. We have a big sport and recreation facility. Um, so students are very, very active on campus in a variety of ways. We do have orientation and freshers week, as I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of ways for students, especially our international students, to find a home very quickly at UCD to figure out what it is they want to be a part of um, and get to know more students and get to know campus through that, through that way. Um, tuition fees, so as we mentioned, the estimated cost of attendance for UCD is about 40,000. Um, tuition ranges, so anything that's not a science-based curriculum is 21,000. Anything that's a science-based curriculum is $28,000. Um, housing ranges, depending on the student's choice in housing, whether or not you want a meal plan. Um, and then of course, living expenses and so forth. And then we did already talk about the uh, the financial aspect of scholarships, the direct loan program. Students are eligible to work 20 hours a week during term time and 40 hours a week during non-academic term time. So that can be a great option if students are looking to make a little extra money while they're in school. And then I will pass it off to Liam. All right, I'm back. Um, so Macquarie University, you might not know this, but there's actually only about 40 universities in Australia and they're all private except for one. So we are one of the public universities um, in Australia as well. Um, always like to have a kangaroo there. We sort of briefly touched on it, but most of the degrees are um, three years. Um, there are some, however, engineering and psychology are four year degrees. You can also do a double degree, so a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science simultaneously, for example, and that's also four years. So you'll be graduating essentially with two pieces of paper, which is a pretty good deal. And also great for students that aren't 100% sure what they want to do, or if you're really interested in two separate areas, it's a really great way to um, just go in and try different things. And for students that really have no idea what they want to do, I still think that Australia can be a really great option for you. I generally recommend students to um, go with what they're passionate um, for in their bachelor's degree and then in their master's degree after you've had that time to really think about what you want to do, um, you can go and specialise. And I think it's also worth remembering that it's predicted that we're all going to have 30 to 40 careers in our lifetime. So don't be too stressed about what you want to do. Just go with what you love as well. Um, Sydney, I think, is a beautiful city. There's about 7 million people in Sydney. Um, of, well, in Australia, we've actually only got 24 million people, which is essentially the population from Santa Barbara down to um, San Diego. So quite substantially different. We also don't have the traffic as well because of that. Um, so the university itself is actually across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So we have a train station on campus aptly called the Macquarie University train station that goes direct into the city and it takes about 25 minutes to get into the city. Um, so best of both worlds for students, the big cosmopolitan city experience, but yeah, you can retreat back to campus, which is a really pretty parkland to university. Um, there's also really beautiful beaches close by if you're into surfing um, and that sort of thing as well. Australians love sports as well, so there's plenty of things 
things to ha um, that goes on um, in weekends and your time in Australia too. Just across the road from the campus is actually a huge shopping centre, which they claim to have the most international brands under one roof in the Southern Hemisphere. She kind of gives that because there's not much competition in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, on campus, we have about 40,000 students, and of that, there are 12,000 international students. So one of the most international universities in the world. Um, and of that, there are about 600 North American students on campus, so you certainly won't be alone. I think it's, um, more, as more and more students realize the benefits of studying overseas and the financial value of it, it's just gonna increase as well. Um, so you may or may not know this, but we actually invented Wi-Fi. So you're welcome. Our professors, um, yeah, made, created the science behind Wi-Fi, which is very exciting. Um, you may or may not be familiar with cochlear hearing aids as well, but their global headquarters are on campus. So it's a very much an industry focused university as well. If anyone's doing first robotics, it's, um, we have great scholarships for students doing that. Um, and also you can see down the bottom is the robotics library. So our library is five stories high, um, but only three stories above ground. Um, and the library has a capacity for 1.85 million books, which is pretty cool. Um, for anyone who's interested in history, this is David uh, Christian, um, who did a TED talk on the history of the world in 18 minutes. So if that's what you're interested in, highly recommend that you listen to that because there's actually um, ability to have full scholarships based on that program, which is very cool. Um, so the university has nine subjects ranked in the top 100 um, globally. So that includes linguistics, psychology and environmental studies as well. We're also really well known for our business programs um, as well as marine sciences and you're actually able to do your placements on the Great Barrier Reef, which is very cool as well. Um, hopefully you've seen um, a list of our majors on the website, but if not, definitely let me know and I can send that through to you so you can have a better look of how it all works. Um, this is just a snapshot of our campus. So Muse there is a student um, essentially ground where they can, you can go and study um, and they also have the longest, most continuous desk in the Southern Hemisphere as well, which is quite funny. Um, this is our train station um, and the middle picture is actually our library. We also have our own hospital on campus that we own and operate. Um, so it's great if you're thinking about doing medicine or um, physiotherapy or chiropractic studies as well. Um, and also as a student, um, using your healthcare insurance, you can actually go and speak to the doctor on campus. You don't actually pay for any of that, which is very cool. Um, there's a picture of our swimming pool, which I always like to joke that we have an outdoor swimming pool, unlike Ireland, um, and that's a reflection of our weather as well. So generally speaking, if it gets below 65 degrees in winter, we complain it's too cold. Um, if it's above 100 degrees in summer, we complain it's too hot. So we'd like to keep it quite mild, um, very similar to Southern Californian weather as well, which is nice. Um, lots of different food on campus. Um, I think the biggest complaint from Californians is that we don't have good Mexican food in Australia. But my biggest complaint here is I can't find good Asian food. So it's part of the fun experience as well. Um, we have a huge sports complex um, on campus, so you can certainly try new sports, um, participate um, in social and competitive sports as well, which is really fun. Um, and as part of your program, you will do an internship or service learning activity as well. Um, and you can do the Global Leadership Program, which is a um, extracurricular activity that you can take um, that essentially adds an extra layer of internationalization to your degree. And it does um, come up on your transcript as well. So there's so many different things that you can get involved in on campus. This is our accommodation. So I generally recommend to students they stay at Dunmore Lang, especially as freshmen coming out of high school that have never really been to Australia before. Um, you essentially live on corridors. Um, you often have your own bedroom um, and you may have your own bathroom or you may share, depending on the price range that you want to pay. Um, and it has a full meal plan as well, which is quite good. Another great option is the Macquarie and Beverly Village, where you live in townhouses. We have five or six other students um, and you have your own bedroom and your own bathroom, which is very cool. It doesn't have a meal plan, um, but that can be good for some people and not so good for the others. So it's definitely worth working out what you're interested in doing, um, how much you want to put towards your accommodation and essentially going through there as well.
Um, this is generally a breakdown of how it all works at the university. So as I mentioned before, we do have rolling admissions and no deadline. So you can apply anytime you're ready as long as you have your SAT or ACT score if you're from high school um, and you're in your senior year. If you're transferring, um, you just need to study one year of college, um, whether it's um, at a community college or a four-year university, and then um, we can look at your credits as well. So generally speaking, tuition is averaged between $22,000 and $27,000, and that depends on what you want to study as well. Um, and the Australian government recommends that you have access to about $13,000 US dollars to live comfortably. So that includes flights going backwards and forwards, um, as well as um, all your living costs, your health insurance, meal plans, essentially everything you could possibly spend money on in 12 months. So budgeting $40,000 is a really good place to start. Um, and as we're saying, you can use US financial aid um, and we do have some merit-based scholarships as well. So the higher the SAT, ACT score that you achieve, the more opportunity for a higher scholarship as well. And you can work while studying in Australia. A minimum wage is $19 an hour, which is pretty good as well. Um, and I think most American students that have sought to find a job have been successful in doing that. So that's an extra income that's really great. So you can work 20 hours per week during semester and full time in non-teaching weeks. It's actually the same for Ireland as well. Um, in terms of the academic dates, it's a little different. Um, so once you finish high school, you're in about May or June. You then start with us at the end of July and then you study all the way until the first, last week of November and then you're on summer vacation essentially until February. So that's kind of the equivalent of the May, June, July um, summer breaks here. Um, you then start again at the end of February and go until basically the last week of June and July is our winter vacation. So a little different, but easy to get your head around it once you do. Um, and there is also the Macquarie MD that I think a few students are interested in, which is a two plus four year program um, where you can go in from high school and get a place in the medical program, which is pretty cool. Do you have any questions? So anyone there? You've got a question about visas as to how that works. Um, Anonymous has said, if I do, I need a visa to study in Australia or the US. Um, sorry, Ireland. <laughs> um, for Australia, yes, you do. So once you accept your offer to the university. Um, we will then give you a document called a COE, which is confirmation of enrollment. And that's what you need to um, apply for your visa, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and I can help you throughout that process as well. You don't have to send anything off, it's all online. In Ireland, we actually do require students to have visas. Um, uh, for North American students specifically, but we do require that all of our students um, register with the Immigration Bureau. So it's about 300 euro a year. Um, students have to register within 90 days of entering the country because a US passport is only good in Ireland for up to 90 days. Um, once you register, you get a card and that allows you to stay longer. And that's what also allows you to work 20 hours a week during term time and 40 during non-academic term time. All right. Um, one of the questions um, that we asked was how many um, U.S. students we have on our campuses. So for us, it's about 600 students, and that's anywhere from study abroad and exchange right through to research. Um, we have about 2,000 on campus. That includes our undergraduate students and our study abroad students on campus. So, um, but in general, we have about 8,000 international students specifically. Um, another question is um, how do students register for classes? Um, do you want to go through? So for us, again, once you accept your offer to the university um, and you've got the place, um, you can then essentially enroll online. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, and that's also after we get your official documents. So you have to have graduated from your program, if it is high school, um, to then enroll. Um, we don't have capped programs like in the US. So even if you're enrolling in your first week um, that you're in Sydney, that's totally fine. We have lots of people that can help you do that as well. So that's no stress. Um, our registration usually happens a little bit later than the U.S. system just because Irish students don't actually get their university placements until um, about August because of their structure um, in terms of application process. 
So orientation happens um, the week before school starts, and registration happens just right before orientation. For most of my students, um, they are actually pre-registered for a lot of their courses. Because the curriculum is so structured, there's not a ton of flexibility. Most students are only actually registering for their electives that they would like to choose to take because that's up to them. Um, so it's actually a pretty easy process um, than what your friends might experience here in the US. Next question is, do professors teach the classes? Um, for us, generally speaking, it is a yes. They're certainly course coordinators. In the first year classes, we may have some TAs, um, but we also have lectures and tutorials. So in a lecture is generally when the professor would be giving the class, um, and it may be upwards of 200 students in that lecture. Uh, but then you have tutorials, and that's generally capped to 18 students, and that's when you really get to know the academic staff um, and you, the other people in the class, and you go over the materials and learn that as well. UCD is actually uh, quite similar um, because in any given program, even though it is a much more structured curriculum, there are still some overlapping courses that students need to take across the board. So in a biological science program, for example, students are going to have to take very similar classes from the get-go, but then as they move through the program, they'll get more specific and subsequently much uh, smaller. Um, the model of Irish education is a little bit more sit, learn, listen, take exams. Um, so we, uh, we find that our American students tend to be really active and engaged because that's how we're essentially programmed to do, um, especially in high school, um, and then uh, offset uh, onto college. But um, our professors really enjoy working with American students because they are the ones to typically come up and ask questions and participate in, dis in discussion. And the professors really welcome it and love it. So very similar to what the answer about McQuarrie in terms of our structure um, of professors and tutorials and lectures and so forth. Cool. Um, oh, great questions. Thank you yeah. for sending those through. Are there any more? Yeah. Okay. What is the job prospects for international architecture students? You have architecture. So we do have architecture. Do um, because it's much more of a studio focused um, environment, stu uh, students are doing studio work. Um, that par uh, portfolio and primarily leads to internship opportunities. In our engineering and architecture fields, there are options for internships while you're in school with a, um, a company in Ireland. While most students um, will actually look at practicum and internship opportunities back in their home country. Um, because the degree is um, internationally recognized, there's really no issues with students looking at um, employment opportunities afterwards. Um, UCD was actually just ranked um, number one in Ireland for graduate employability, so we're really proud of that. Um, we're finding that uh, employers are looking to UCD um, as far as schools in Ireland for our, our students who are graduating because, again, of that experiential learning element that you get with the direct entry model that both of our schools offer. Is there any other questions? Come in, Kiri. No, that's okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really hope this was helpful for you as well. Um, it would be great if you can, oh, one more. Uh, when will I find out if we have been accepted? Our turnaround time for both of us is fairly quick. Um, it really is because it's more of an academic review. Um, many students can actually go on our website and find out if they will be admitted because you, um, you can verify the coursework um, and the requirements that are uh, that are needed for that particular program. So for UCD, I do recommend students either reach out to me directly, and you can provide your um, your academic, um, your transcript and test scores, and I can, and what program you want to apply to, and I can verify it for you. Or you can go to our website and review the undergraduate entry requirements for any of our programs. So again, it's important that students do that so that you're only applying to programs you'll be admitted to. But um, the review process tends to be a little bit quicker, about two to three weeks. Um, students would generally find out um, as long as we receive your necessary materials um, within the right time frame. So we do need your transcript, your test scores, ACT or SAT, and AP scores as well. For Macquarie, um, once you make the application to the university, um, you'll get an email to say that the application is being assessed. Um, and then it's generally about two weeks. Um, and I'll be in contact with you throughout those two weeks as well. So you can certainly let me know um, once you've made the application that um, you've put it in and then we can work through it. And then you'll get a letter of offer, hopefully, to the university. 
Um, and next question is, what is the difference between psychology and cognitive sciences at Macquarie? It's a great question. Um, they're somewhat similar, but lead to different sort of um, graduate outcomes as well. So the psychology um, is more very much focused, I'm trying to think of this in a plain way, um, a psychological perspective, I don't know, that doesn't help very much, but the cognitive sciences is more so of a neuroscience and how the brain works, as opposed to psychology, which is often um, personality and characteristics based. Um, but Stephen, I'll send you a list of the units so you can actually see the difference of the um, courses between the two of them. Um, and I think depending on which one you want would depend on sort of what your career aspirations are as well at the end of it. So more than happy to answer that question more later. Great um, questions. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, on the screen um, are both of our emails, so you're welcome to write them down. Please get in touch if you have any questions um, or uh, comments on the, the webinar. Um, we appreciate yeah, any feedback as well. Um, if you'd like to see more of these or any particular topics that you're interested in hearing about, please let us know. Um, but thank you so much for joining, and we hope you have um, a great uh, rest of your evening. Thanks Wonderful so much. Week. Cheers.